Another glorious day in the Corps. Day in the Marine Corps is like a day on the farm. Every meal is a banquet. Every paycheck a fortune. Every formation a parade. I love the Corps. Nice Hey guys, uh, it's the Paint Slinger, and I'm back uh, after a lengthy hiatus, getting a little well, because, you know, 2020 decided to kick me right in the, well, and give me a nice bout of COVID right at the end of the year, December 21st, positive with COVID, you know. Stop the spread, wear masks. It's a real thing. Trust me, I know. I was put into the hospital for 10 days because of that damn virus. But anyway, enough about that. Who cares? We're not here to talk about that. Well, I mean, we're here. Uh, not, that, not that we don't care, but who cares? We're not here. We're here to talk about the newest coolest game and the coolest miniatures that I have gotten my hands on. It's from my favorite prop, one of my favorite properties, if not my favorite, most favorite property. And it's, uh, it's Aliens by James Cameron. And of course the original was by Ridley Scott, uh, which was Alien. But Gale Force 9 has released a game called Another Glorious Day in the Core. And in there you've got 16... 16 xenomorphs, so you got 16 aliens, Rawr. you know, you got 16 of those guys, plus you get a small squad uh, of the Marines from, uh, from the movie. You get Vasquez, who we have right here. Yeah, look at that, eh? You get Vasquez. Hicks, Hudson, Gorman, Ripley, and Newt. And that's what you start the game with. And then you can also get an expansion called Ultimate Badasses. And the Ultimate Badasses basically gives you the rest of the squad. So you get um, Apone, Crow, Dietrich, Worsbowski, uh for some reason, they've decided that's where they're going to include Burke, but you get Burke in there as well. And you get Drake, the other smart gunner. So, so together, both boxes, boom, you get all of the movie Marines, which is really, really cool. And then they've also created another expansion on top of that, which is called Get Away From Her, You Bitch. <laughs> Studio Kitty Kim wanted to come and say hi. Hi. Need your kisses? All right. And in there you get the the alien queen, Ripley and power loader, Ripley with Newt, being you know, uh, Bishop and Bishop torn in half, so it's called half Bishop. And uh, it's been an amazing ride painting these miniatures. Uh, I've kind of really been chomping at the bit to get in there. Uh, one of the ones that I'm currently painting right now is Burke. You know, the kind of the a hole himself. He's not quite finished yet, but you can see he's uh, he's coming along. Now, the camera hasn't been used in so long that it's forgotten that it needs to. So I'm currently working on Burke for my, you know, for the set. But we're going to talk about Vasquez right here. We're going to talk about the smart gunner, Vasquez. One of the ultimate, ultimate badasses. 
that come in the movie. So what we what I've done here is I've actually kind of put her in um, sub assemblies. I've I've uh, blue tacked her all together. Blue tack. It's like your best friend in the world. And then what we can do is we can take pieces off. And what that'll what that will do is allow us to get into spots where we normally would not be able to get into if we had glued everything all together. And the blue tack is really easy to clean up afterwards. All you do is just run the bigger ball of blue tack over where you had it. Oops. And off the stand she goes. But that's okay. Right now it's okay. Because, uh. We're not actually painting anything yet. Now, Gale Force 9, as good as they have, as good as these miniatures are, they're not quite movie accurate. Um, if you notice right here on the legs that they have the, oh that at least um, Vasquez and Drake have the greaves they have the armor which they don't have in the movie at all so what we're gonna do is we're gonna take the color that we're using for the BDUs or the battle dress uniforms for those of you who don't know and we're going to give the whole thing a base of ion rock skin. Right there. Now, I'm probably pronouncing it wrong, but hey, it's my show. And if you want to tell me how to pronounce it, I will gladly change on how it's pronounced. But until then, I'll pronounce it the way I think it's pronounced. And if I'm wrong, I'm wrong. Okay. So what we're going to do is we're going to start by giving the battle dress uniforms or the BDUs the uh, the all over color and we're actually going to go right onto the grease too. The grease usually I do a different color but since she's not actually supposed to have them I've decided they're going to be the same color. Yeah, I was excited to tear into these boxes and start painting all the minis. Because Aliens. Now for me, Aliens is one of those movies that I can almost, almost actually have, literally watched back to back. Um, I had just finished a viewing of Aliens for myself while I put it on to to paint because it's in for me it's it's nice in the background I've seen this movie you know a hundred times or more and uh, a friend of mine came over and she's like She's like, I want to watch a movie. I'm like, well, what do you want to watch? She's like, I don't know. Let's watch Aliens. I'm like, well, I literally just finished. You can see the credits rolling on the screen right now. She goes, well, do you want to watch it again? I'm like, hell yeah, I want to watch it again. So we just started it over.
and uh, hit play. Away we went. And then we painted miniatures while we watched Aliens. And while I watched it literally for the second time back to back. very very hard for me to get uh, to get tired of that movie I might take a break from it you know want to watch something else I mean especially right now with with watching the work with painting the miniatures I have been uh, watching the movie as uh, as research, actually, making sure that I get the colors, or say the try and do the patches that are on that are on Gorman's or Bishop's outfits. I'm just trying my best. It'll work or it won't work. Okay. But you know, getting back to the actual minis themselves. Oh, don't tell me that you guys haven't seen a single thing or hopefully I just moved out of frame. If not, well, at least you got to hear me talk for a while. That's uh, that's something. I don't know if it's a good something or a bad something, but it is what it is. Now there's something that the paint slinger has never done before until well this set here. That was paint camouflage. I had never painted camouflage before in my life. And now I have. Fun fact about aliens, the camouflage pattern that is that that was made for the uh that was made for the movie was literally made for the movie there's no real world equivalent you can't go to the you can't go to a surplus store and find the aliens you know it's, it's the aliens uh, camouflage you know it was uh, specifically produced For the uh, for the movie, I did not know that, but I'm always finding out neat and interesting little tidbits about about my favorite movie. Um, found out that the squad of Marines or the the actors that played the Marines. Um, Were you know they worked out together? They, you know, they rehearsed together. They did all their stuff together to you know to become that unit to become the uh, the Marine Squad that we know and we love. However, um, Sigourney Weaver was not there. Neither was um, Paul Reiser uh, who played Burke. Neither of them were were there for really any of the training training sessions where the where the Marines where the Marine actors worked together. Uh, and that was to make them feel like 
it was to it was to make them feel like outsiders to make them feel like they didn't quite belong and uh yeah it worked but i'm kind of getting off topic i'm talking more about the actual movie than i am than i am about the actual game but then again the game is very uh thematic it's very it's actually based a lot actually on on the movie so you're at LV426 uh, Hadley's Hope in case you haven't watched the extended edition and if you haven't watched the extended edition or the director's director's cut um, I highly recommend it because there's things in there that you'll you're just not gonna see if you keep watching the theatrical version there is a different version out there most of us know that but if you don't know that check it out it's going to be an amazing ride all right so what I've done as you can see is I've just continued the the paint job or the base color all the way down over the greaves so we're going to try and camouflage <laughs> no pun at all. we're going to try and camouflage those greaves <laughs> So I've kind of come up with uh, what, uh, well I shouldn't say I, uh, I belong to a couple of different groups on on the, on the Facebook that has to deal with the game and somebody came up with actually a really good recipe and I'm using the re using their recipe to do, uh, to do the camouflage. So thank you for, thank you to them for, for coming up with the recipe. I think it looks fantastic. Um, the name at the moment escapes me, but I will look that up and I will have it for us next time. But I want to want to thank uh, Wow, I'm horrible with with names and stuff like that. Uh, I want to give credit where credit is due. Basically, this is not my recipe. This is this is somebody else's recipe, but it looks absolutely amazing, and it gave me the it gave me the confidence to actually try painting camouflage. And the very first miniature slash person I tried painting camouflage on was um, Hudson. So now we're going to go with Death Guard Green. And we're going to take some of that, put that on our palette. There we go. Death Guard Green is going to be our lighter, our lighter color, and I've switched from my medium layer brush to my small layer brush because now we're gonna now it's slightly finer details again it still can be a little messy which is which is just fine all right William there she is Vasquez in all her glory and for doing Camo. Uh, it's literally just splotches. Or lines. Or a combination of the both. And you just kind of put them willy-nilly however you think you want it to go I mean if, if you want you can try your best and study the the camouflage on on the actual actors on the costumes and try your best to recreate it but remember these things are going to be seen at about two feet two feet distance so make it look good but you don't have to be precise 
Also, again, if you just don't really feel like doing camouflage, you don't have to do camouflage. As I've said, and I will continue to say, these oops, these are your miniatures. Paint them however, however you choose to paint them. It does not matter. If you want to just give them like a solid, a solid khaki green color or a solid desert color or however you want to do them, well that's entirely up to you. I am going for something that at least resembles what it looks like in the movies. Again, I'm not being 100% precise, uh, mostly because that would drive me batty. So I'm going for approximate. And you know what? It looks good. Especially when you have them at, at the distance you're going to be playing on the table. You know, you're not going to have them this close on the table. You know, you're not going to be, you'll be looking at them more at about an arm's length. Let's go from the side. So you're not going to be looking at your miniatures here. And we're looking at your miniatures, well, basically almost farther than my screen shows. So, approximation is okay. If you want, by all means, try and find your colors. Try and and, and try them. Try and do them as close to the movie as you want. I, however, as much as I love this movie, have decided to do approximations. And I think it looks good. still are military so all the drab is the is the watchword of the day Funny enough, I wasn't actually thinking that I was going to get to the camouflage today, but that's all right. Where we got to is where we got to. being a little messy with it but that's okay now, some camouflage is actually gonna try and hide you you know actually look like your surroundings so you might you know
There we go. I think that looks pretty good. And we're coming just up, we're just about coming up on our time too, so nicely done. Yummy. Okay, so if we try, see I've kind of actually used the camouflage to hide those, hide the armored legs and make it kind of look like she's still got pants all the way down. So that's a kind of a three-tone camo, as it were. I've used, uh, the colors that I used were Castellan Green, Death Guard Green, and Iron Rock Skin. Yeah, and I think her, <coughs> I think her armor's turned out pretty darn good. Now the last thing that we're gonna do, just before we take off for the day, it's a big chest plate. I am gonna use a new color for me. It's called Nocturne Green, so it's a very deep green. I can use my medium brush for this because if I get messy with it, we can go back and clean it up. We don't need that much because the breastplate itself is pretty small. There's going to be almost no difference between the black and this green. She's coming along. She'll be good, she'll be great. We're gonna love Vasquez. Actually, she's the last one out of the squad that I have to do, and I've been saving her especially for you guys. Especially for you guys. There we are. How's that looking? I think it's looking pretty darn good. Okay. And we're going to see if we can actually get the, the, the writing on her on her chest plate. We're going to try. Uh, no, uh, no guarantees. <laughs> but we're going to try. So, uh, until then, uh, please stay safe. And follow all the uh, all the directions set forth by your uh, by your health department. Uh, wear masks. Help stop the spread. Trust me, I've been there. It is not a place you want to be. Trust me. But I'm glad to be back. So until then, paint safe, and we will see you in the paint pit. Thank you.